another face, another player of Dorna for next season. This is uh, Jared Ogunbebe Jackson. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Thanks for having me. Yeah, where are you right now? Where are you coming from? I'm in uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba. This is where I was born and raised, Canada. Um, just with my family uh, during the summertime, and enjoying my time so far. Well, great. How and how are things in Canada? If you look at the Corona crisis, uh, it's it's pretty good. Um, in the region that I'm in, in, in Manitoba, it's been very good. Um, not a lot of cases where I am, but you know, more in the Ontario where Toronto is and where Quebec is. There's more cases over there, but so far. Um, we've been very disciplined in my city as far as social distancing and washing your hands and things like that. And now we're in the phase three of our uh, stages. So things are going pretty well where I thank you. And how was it for you the last couple of months that you weren't able to do the things you want to do? Um, it was definitely a shock at first. I think, uh, you know, where I was last year in Finland and just having to stop a season and come home. I think it's, uh, uncharted territory for everybody. I think everybody has to adjust to it. And of course I wanted to continue playing, but I think in a way it's kind of been a blessing in disguise in the fact that I've never really had this much time to spend with my family and my brother, my sister and my cousins and stuff for this period of time. Normally it's maybe one month or two months, not four months or five months. So from that standpoint, it's been very nice to just kind of get get that quality time back that uh, you miss a lot when you play professional sports, but it's been okay. Last year you played in Finland. How was it over there? It was good. Uh, very different experience. Um, you know, obviously we had uh, the FIBA Cup, which was, you know, good experience for us. Also, we didn't perform as well as I thought we could have, but, uh, you know, just playing a lot of games, different style of play, you know, being a leader, being the captain for the team um, was good experience for me. And uh, I think I showed well in that league. And um, I think it was just a stepping stone. I think every year so far of my career has kind of just been a stepping stone for me to move forward. And uh, I'm definitely excited about what's to come this year with Dona. Yeah, we get that uh, later on. Um, <laughs> you, you also played in Portugal. You were the guard of the year uh, called by Eurobasket. Yes, yes. Um, my compliments. Yeah, that was, thank you. That was my second year. And um, I think Port Portugal was definitely... Uh, such a beautiful place for me. Um, I'm still very close with the management there. Um, I'm close with their families and, and their kids and we've traveled and met up together through over the years. So when I was in Portugal, it definitely felt like family. I was there for two seasons and you know, the club put a lot of ownership on me the second year and a lot of uh, responsibility. And we had, a, we had a pretty good year. You know, We didn't advance in the playoffs like we wanted to, but for that type of club where we were, it was a successful year, and personally, it was also a successful year. And probably a big difference in the weather with Portugal and Finland. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. The weather over there was beautiful, very tropical. The people are so nice over there, very friendly, and the food is amazing. So it was definitely a, a great experience. Well, there. it's going to be the same in Groningen, I can tell you already. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Um, then the management called and the donor got interested in you as a player. Uh, what do you think about that? You probably never heard of Dona before? To tell you the truth, I, I, I had not heard of Donar, but here's a funny story. Is, uh, when I was in college, I played with Ross Beckering and I okay. played with, uh, I played with uh, Dan Wiersum also oh, yeah. and oh no, Henry Beckering. So, when Donar called, I wasn't aware that they played for the club, but I have a relationship with Ross. I have a relationship with uh, Dan, and, you know, I spoke to them about the club, and they just had, you know, Ross has been a staple for Donar. He's won championships there, and he's had nothing but positive things to say about the entire organization. So another ambassador for Donar, Ross it, Beckling. It, it, exactly. So that really, really, really helped me make my decision, just him explaining everything and, uh, it really made me feel comfortable, you know, and confident. And I think what he explained the most to me was just that it's a winning organization. It's a professional organization, first class organization. And at this stage in my career, that's that's what I want. You know, That's not necessarily about the league or where I am, but I want a chance to compete in Euro comp competition like Champions or FIBA, but also to play for a club that wants to win and the fans are behind you and, the, and it's a first class organization. So... I couldn't be happier to have this opportunity. Did you know that Ross came back to Holland a couple of months ago to play uh, three on three? Yes, yeah, we spoke about it. He said, uh, 
prior to that, I think he hadn't been playing. And then they spoke to him and said, do you want to do this? And he had to start getting back into basketball shape. And then, you know, obviously with Corona and everything that happened, that kind of cut that, uh, that goal short for him. But yeah, we spoke about it, which would have been interesting, but hopefully he'll be able to come out there and yeah. power out there. Cause I know he's, he's came back to visit and watch a few games a couple of times. Yeah. I know he's still very close with some of the guys in the organization. So it would be a, uh, it's crazy how the world works, you know, just that. And I heard that uh, Henry is now, he's a police officer in Canada. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> he's a family man and police officer. And uh, yeah, I, I didn't play with Henry, but in the summer times, we would always have scrimmages and stuff like that. And he would come and, you know, I have, you know, a decent relationship with him too. So they're, they're great guys. Both of those guys are oh, yeah. for us individuals. And uh, right. I, I really... In my first year when I was playing at Calgary, that was one of the main reasons I wanted to go there was because of Ross and Robbie Sohota, another player who played in uh, in Holland. Um, just just because they were guys who were very determined, they were very disciplined, and they wanted to be professionals themselves. And I wanted to follow that example. And uh, my first year, they definitely were great captains, and they gave me a lot of advice. And throughout my career, you know, every two three years, I would be in touch with Ross and Robbie. And Henry and some of those guys, just about what I need to do to continue improving and, you know, give myself the opportunity to become a pro. And six years later, I have the chance to play for the wow. same clubs. Great. Just, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's really great. What kind of player are you? <sighs> what kind of player am I? I would say uh, I'm an unselfish player. Um, I'm a very competitive player. I want to win. And uh, I think that's the most important thing for me is I want to win. And... I kind of wear my heart on my sleeve, but I feel like I'm somebody who can do a little bit of everything. I'm efficient. You know, I shoot the ball very well. Um, I can get into the lane and make passes. Uh, I'm disciplined. Um, I can lead, you know, or I can follow, but, you know, I like to lead. And as the point guard of the team, you know, put guys in their spots and make my teammates better. I think that's a big thing is, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean scoring 30 points or having the ball in your hands. It's what do you do on the floor to make guys better? And, I think that's the attributes that I bring, bring in. It's a little bit of everything. I think okay. I, you know, I can rebound the ball pretty well for my size. I can pass the ball, I can shoot the ball, I can get into the lane, make plays, and you know that's what I plan to do for Dona. Well, looking forward to see you on the court over here. Do you already know what kind of number you're going to play on? Yeah, uh, number three, right? Number three. That's great. Okay, we write that down. Um, some other things you got your own website. This is Jared.com. It, it looks very yeah. good. It looks very professional. And I Thank noticed you. um, you're using the sentence "Stay true, be great." You will. Yes. You're you're doing a lot for your community at home. Can yeah. you can you tell us yeah. something about that? Um, like when I grew up, um, you know, I did basketball camps and stuff like that, but I didn't really have somebody to look to. You know, I didn't have another professional or somebody playing pro or that I look to. So a lot of my motivation came from my family and it came from my coaches and stuff. And I always said to myself, like, whenever I get to the position where I'm a professional or, you know, a high level player, I want to be able to give back to my community. So I've done, I do camps, I do camps every summer um, with kids and, you know, I teach them the skills and I give them my personal time, not just basketball, but after I'm there to talk to them about schooling and education and how important that is and how important it is to be close with your family and to have friends and, to work hard and not just from a basketball perspective, but in anything you do. And that's kind of what my, my statement of stay true, be great is just that stay true to who you are all, all the time. So that's kind of the challenge I have with myself is okay. Yesterday, maybe I wasn't working as hard or maybe I said I was going to get something done, but I didn't to me, I'm not staying true. So I'm not honoring, you know what I mean? What I, what I'm, what I'm calling to myself and be great. is just like, I think a lot of times we settle for mediocrity Instead of shooting to be great, you know, even for where I am right now as a 5'10 point guard playing in my sixth year professionally, this has always been something that was in my mind since a 12, 13. I always knew I was going to be here and I was determined to be here, but I'm excelling. I'm trying to push myself further. To the limit. Um, another thing I've done is um, I have a scholarship at, at my high school. So basically the scholarship goes to any, any basketball athlete right now who is just the hardest worker, doesn't have to be the best player on the team, but somebody who is the hardest worker, shows up on time, is respectful, um, you know, gives his all to his teammates. And, you know, it's a scholarship for them. That way, when they go to university, they can buy their books or maybe help them with tuition. And this is this will be the third year 
of me uh, having my scholarship for for my high school and that's just a it's an honor you know it's an honor just to give back and just to see the impact that it's had on kids and parents and just the response that they get for that from that is is very rewarding you know it's not uh it's not something I'm, I'm doing for myself. I truly want to give back and they helped me so much when I was there. And I think it's my responsibility being in the position I'm in to give back. So, well, great story, man. And that's good that you come to Dornadon because we've got a big uh, fan base over here. A lot of yeah. people are very interested in you players and in the team, of course. So that, that fits sure. perfectly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Did you see the hall already? Did you see games? How they are going to be played in Martini Plaza with four and a half thousand people? Um, I've seen, yeah, like as soon as I signed or was about to sign, I watched a couple games. I watched when you guys played against Benfica at Martini Plaza. When I was in Portugal, I played against Benfica a number of times. Um, I watched when you guys played against Pinar, I believe. Yes, is the Carciaca. Name. Yeah, so I watched a few games just to kind of see the style of play that they're playing, but obviously that can change with coaches and different personnel, but just also the atmosphere. And it was amazing. Yeah. Uh, just seeing fans, seeing the support that they give was, was as a player, that's what you want, right? You want to play in front of your fans. And even if there is that added pressure that, Hey, they want you to win, that should only bring the best out of you. So uh, definitely excited. And hopefully with Corona and everything, we'll be able to have fans and, you know, hopefully have that same support that you guys have had for yeah. so many years. We're working on that, of course, but we have to wait on the regulations from the government, uh, what is uh, right. okay. But we hope for the best, of course. Right. Well, right. thank you very much for this conversation uh, so that the, pe the people can get to know you a little bit more and uh, hope to see you in Groningen, Donar. Yes, thank you so much. And hopefully we'll talk soon and see you guys soon. Okay, thanks.